Hello everyone. Welcome to the Old Man and the Reed. My name is Jerry. Uh, today I'm going to discuss uh, the books I've read by Mia Kato. Uh, uh, Kato is uh, a uh, Mozambican but of Portuguese ancestry uh, and he's a writer I had actually never heard of before until I started uh, reading the Newstat International Prize winners and he was the winner of 2014. Uh, when I read his books I was just uh, blown away. Uh, just an incredibly good writer. Uh, just beautiful prose, very poetic writing, but uh, based on what's categorized as magical realism. But his magical realism is a little different than uh, most of the other writers of that genre. Uh, his is based more around just the traditional uh, beliefs uh, of the Mozambique people based on you know their culture and religion. Uh, so I've always thought you know it'd be similar to uh, somebody who isn't familiar with Christianity uh, reading the stories from the Bible and uh, thinking that was magical realism because unless they're familiar with it and used to it you know some of those stories would seem quite magical uh, like magical realism but uh, anyway he's just a wonderful writer just uh, comes up with some very unique stories and uh, my, a lot of them are mind-blowing, bewildering, but just fascinating. So I'll start showing the books I've read. Uh, the first book I have is Sleepwalking Land and this is about a young boy named Mudinga uh, who has been taken in by an old uh, man named Teher. Uh, he's, uh, it, they're both escaping the ravages of war and uh, uh, they discover a burned out bus that they're going to take refuge in. Uh, now the bus has some a few dead bodies in it that they have to clear out, but uh, while they're doing that they discover uh, some notebooks that one of the uh, dead passengers had written. And so uh, uh, Mudinga uh, starts reading some of the stories to uh, to hear to hear, uh, and uh, uh, then the chapters start alternating between the uh, the story between the, uh, Medung, Mudinga and Tahir's uh, efforts to survive and stories. Uh, from the notebook and uh, as the book progresses the stories start getting closer and closer and then they eventually merge into basically one story. Just incredibly well written, fascinating uh, story, uh, but that's uh, Sleepwalking Land. The next book uh, I have is uh, Under the Frang Frangipani, and uh, this is actually told by a dead man who's been buried under a frangipani tree. Uh, he has uh, discovered that he's to be dug up and uh, displayed as a hero, and uh, in order to escape, uh, he, an ant eater friend of his. Uh, has helped him to uh, enter the body of a policeman who has been sent there to investigate a murder. Uh, it's you know, mind-blowing, twisting story. But then uh, the policeman starts interviewing the people. They're all elderly people that are uh, in the area and each of those people confess, confesses to the murder all using magical realist or magical mystical uh, explanations for what they did but uh, just a, a 
incredibly puzzling, confusing story, but uh, incredibly well written. Uh, the next book is The Last Flight of the Flamingo, and uh, this is actually basically a story about uh, United Nations uh, peacekeepers who have been mysteriously disappearing in what appears to be explosions. But all they find from those peacekeepers are a blue helmet and a penis. Uh, anyway, uh, an official uh, from the UN is sent to investigate the disappearances. Uh, next book I have is Confessions of the Lioness, and this is about a small village uh, that is being terrorized by lions, and uh, it, it is killing all, uh, or killing the women that live there. Uh, they bring in a, a, a hunter named Archangel Bullseye, uh, who uh, is comes to kill the lions, and then uh, there's uh, it splits into two uh, narratives, narratives, uh, one from the hunter and one from uh, one of the young girls uh, from the village, and uh, it, both stories just go into very magical, mystical things, but uh, it and a lot of it has to do with the cultural abuse of women. Uh, in the village. Next book I have is uh, A River Called Time. A uh, very fascinating book. Uh, this is about a young man, Mariano, who has returned to his island home to attend the funeral of his grandfather. Uh, when he gets there, he discovers that his grandfather has named him to inherit the uh, uh, responsibility of running the family affairs, but he also learns that his grandfather is dead, but not dead. Uh, and uh, then he starts discovering letters written to him, but in in his own handwriting from his grandfather. And from these, he learns the family secrets and basically why the grandfather is not dead, even though he's dead. And the next book is The Tuner of Silences. Uh, this is a story that's been, is being narrated by an 11 year old uh, boy named Muanito. Uh, his father has taken him and his brother to a remote uh, game reserve uh, along with another man and uh, the father has been telling them that they are the only survivors in the world. Uh, they've been there for about eight years when uh, all of a sudden a woman appears and basically the whole thing starts to unravel. Uh, the next two books I have are uh, based in uh, the late 1800s, uh, during a time when uh, the Mozambique uh, people were uh, waging war or trying to, trying to overthrow the Portuguese uh, colony. Uh, and the first one I have is uh, Woman of the Ashes. and. Uh, this uh, story alternates between a narration from uh, a Portuguese sergeant named Germano and a 14-year-old girl named Imani, uh, who is actually his interpreter. Uh, but uh, the story takes place in a small village and there's a massive uh, army that's been organized uh, uh, try to uh, overthrow the Portuguese and uh, it's advancing on the village that uh, the two are in. Uh, the next uh, book 
is the sword and the spear, and this follows the same two protagonists, uh, uh, the Sergeant uh, Germano and uh, the young girl Imani. Uh, but in this one, uh, Imani has accidentally shot Germano in the hands, and uh, uh, so he's bleeding profusely, and uh, they uh, uh, take him uh, by canoe up the river to uh, to a uh, very primitive hospital uh, and from there the story kind of divides between two narratives between uh, Germano and Imani. Uh, the next books I have are short story collections. Uh, Mia Kato wrote just fabulous uh, short stories and uh, so I'll show you these that I have. Uh, the first is uh, titled Every Man is a Race and uh, you know they're just very lyrical uh, and um, uh, mystical stories in these but uh, the story, the my favorite story in the book I think is The Bird Dreaming Babob and this is about an old man known as the Birdman, who uh, is followed by hordes of birds. Uh, he goes to a white neighborhood periodically where the children just love him, but uh, the uh, white citizens there feel threatened because he's a black man. The uh, next uh, book is Voices Made Night. Uh, another great short story collection, but uh, a couple of the books I like, or a couple of the stories I liked in the book are Said, titled Said, the Bucket of Water, and this is about a man who wants a son, but he's unable to get his wife pregnant, and so he tells her to go out and seek another man. Uh, very predictable disaster follows that. Uh, next is uh, the barber's most famous customer and this is about a barber who brags to his customers that he uh, cuts the hair of a white man but this makes the police suspicious and they uh, uh, accuse him of helping a terrorist. The uh, next book is The Blind Fisherman, uh, and a uh, couple of the short stories I liked from this one. Uh, the first is titled The Fire, and um, this is about an old man who uh, decides to dig graves for, for both himself and for his wife uh, because no one would be around when they die to dig their graves. but. Uh, this leads to further complications. Uh, and the other, the title uh, story, The Blind Fisherman, is about a fisherman who's adrift on the ocean. Uh, he's uh, run out of bait and he's starving to death and he comes up with the idea that he could fish using his eyeballs as bait. And uh, that's where that story leads from. Next book is Rain, uh, and uh, the title story Rain is about uh, a, uh, there's been a multi-year drought and then uh, uh, suddenly there's a downpour of rain that goes for three days and uh, that's where that story starts from. And then another uh, titled the woman engulfed in stone and this about this is about a man who finds an old woman on the floor in a stone church and she's begging him to help her up uh, but when he tries he's unable to move her and discovers that she is actually turning to stone and the last book i have 
is just a sensational uh, collection of short stories. Uh, I think there's 64 short stories in this one. Um, several of them are the same ones that from some of these other short story collections, but uh, but there's more, a lot more uh, newly translated books that there are stories that have appeared in the book, uh, but they're all basically magical, mystical uh, stories, and uh, some are actually uh, more about cultural clashes and uh, the extreme racism that uh, the uh, Mozambique people suffered during the colonial times. But fantastic book of uh, short stories. Uh, but those are the books I've read by uh, Mia Kato. Uh, he quite a fascinating writer, just very beautiful prose, but just mind-bending, uh, mind-altering, <laughs> hallucinogenic type stories that uh, are bewildering, but just actually fascinating to watch or to read. Uh, so I want to thank you for watching. Uh, the video and uh, we'll hopefully see you in another one. Thanks.